Everyone, well, I'm not in my shop, as you can see. I'm actually up here on the North Shore of Minnesota. It's the Lake Superior behind me. And uh, up here having a relaxing few days at a cabin. And thought I'd bring along the X-Tool F1 to make a gift for the hosts here. Um, well, so I brought along some slate tiles. I've got our X-Tool F1 that we're gonna be using. And of course, the portable power station. So, I'm going to get this all hooked up. We're going to be running some slate tiles, try to be uh, using their uh, logo on this. And hopefully when I'm done, got a nice gift to give them as we depart. So if that interests you, you want to check it out, stay tuned. I'm going to jump right into it. Jumping back into the workshop, this is actually post vacation. I had to do some modifications to the logo and thought I would do that here where you can hear me clearly and I can show you on the screen. So I'm gonna show you how I grabbed their logo and uh, was able to manipulate it to make it look the best. Um, normally in these situations, I would reach out to the company that I'm working with, say, hey, do you have a vector image of your logo or the highest resolution of your logo as possible? In this case, we wanted to surprise them with the gift, so we had to work with what we were able to find. Now, anytime you're working with a logo, do get permission to use it whenever possible. Uh, and uh, definitely don't be using it to uh, sell without permission of using that. But in this case, as a gift, we were pretty sure that it was going to be received fairly well. Uh, went ahead and used this logo. But let's jump into the computer. I'll show you my process on this. Starting with just a simple Google search, we know that their logo is out there. And so we can do a simple search for, I like to use the name of the company and logo. And here in Google, I'm going to jump over to the images tab. And this will bring up... <laughs> things related to your search. But at the top here, we see we've got their logo in two different formats, as a matter of fact. Now, this is the nice square logo that we're going to be going for. And so this is what I'm going to want to download. I'm going to want to save this one. And if we right click on this, we can actually go open image in new tab. And that's just going to display just the straight image for you. So we can definitely uh, go ahead and save this. We're going to drop it into a folder I created here uh, for that. So we're gonna, just going to call it Gooseberry1. And we'll save that. Uh, now, we may want to play around with some of this. So it's always helpful to look at some of these other logos. Now this one, you can see it's actually a uh, transparent image. If you look here, you see kind of a checker box. That's usually saying it's transparent. That actually helps us out a little bit. Um, but having this text a little bit larger is also going to help us out. So I'm going to go ahead and save this one as well. We're going to call this uh, Gooseberry um, 2. And now we have both of them. With these two in mind, we're going to go ahead and jump over into Xtool Creative Space because we were using the Xtool F1. And up here, you can just come up here to the image tab and import. And so, oops, we were there. Uh, Gooseberry cabins. So we've got uh, the ones we've saved. As a matter of fact, it didn't read the one. I think it's saved to the wrong file format. We've got basically this logo from Facebook. So let's open that up. Now, depending on what um, machine uh, parameters you're in. So this one's actually in the S120 watt because I'm not hooked up to anything else. It may want to scale it down. Never scale it down until you're done working with it and then resize it because you're just going to lose resolution. Uh, so we could work with this as is. My problem and concern is anytime we're using text as an image, it tends to not come out as well. So one of the things I want to do right off the bat is try to replicate this text but in a vector. Now, of course, you could try to trace it and uh, you'll see it it kind of gets it you can play around with the fuzziness threshold a bit to try to get it to capture more but you'll you'll see it just never really grabs these crisp details you come to uh, google and just find that font you'll see all sorts of applications here um, pick one that you like to use um, we're gonna let's roll with this one what what font is it.com uh, and here what you can do is actually drag and drop an image that you want to capture your font from. So all I need to do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drag in, I'm actually gonna use that wide logo because that looked a little bit crisp. I'm gonna just drag this in here and you'll see it's going to identify where it's seen some text. Um, 
it'd be nice to crop out the two. These are two different fonts, um, but we'll just start with this um, and see what it can find. So we're gonna click next step and it is going to ask us to optimize the image, <clears throat> try to get it as clear as possible, um, but I'm gonna roll with this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and confirm what these letters are. So that one is a capital G uh, and we're going to skip that. Let me see if it'll, let's see if it'll grab this. There we go. All right, so it's gonna come down and it will list a number of fonts that it thinks it might be. So in the case, this one, this one is a boutique script and they're also gonna tell you where you can find it. Now, this is the, the tricky thing with fonts, depending on what you may have already purchased, you may end up having to pay for fonts. Um, uh, you can sometimes find similar ones that are free, but even uh, those that you can download, you wanna check some of them are only for personal use versus professional use. All right, so once you have found the font, you will be able to download it and you're gonna find that you're eventually gonna be giving these font files you're probably gonna to have to extract them from a zip file. Um, now on Windows and Mac, they're different. I think on Mac, if you just double click those font files, it'll prompt you to install it. On Windows, it may as well. It'll, it'll show you a preview of them, and then you can hit install. You'll get a little window. It's actually on my other screen saying installation, and it should show up. Now, depending on the application or not, it may be available. Let's just see here in uh, XCS. So if I bring in the font tool, Let's go ahead and change this to Gooseberry. Just so we can see this better, we're gonna switch this to engrave. And up here in the top of our screen is the font selection. This is on the latest version of XCS. If you're using an older one, it may be over on the right side here. But we come up here and it's gonna show the Xtool fonts, single line fonts, but then there's system type face. And you can actually just search for fonts. So. Nope, we don't have boutiques. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I am going to save this and we're gonna go Gooseberry one and I'm going to restart XCS. All right, so I've restarted the application. Now, if I highlight the font and come down here and type in boutique, you see it's now coming up with it here. So if you have the application open, you go to install font, save your work, install the font, restart the application, you should be able to see it. So we'll change this and um, let's see how close this looks. Actually it looks pretty good. Now what we're gonna need to do is just angle it a little bit. And if I bring this down, we'll be able to see how close we can get this. Let's take a little bit of time getting things lined up and scaled back just a little bit might need to be rotated just a bit more. But we should be able to get this fairly close. It might not be exact exact, but we'll be able to get it pretty darn close to the original. So, you know, I'm going to say that's that's pretty close. So if I zoom out a little bit here, you can kind of see I think it's just slightly off. I probably have a slightly different font, but for these purposes, it's gonna work pretty well. So we could obviously go ahead and do the other side. We're gonna highlight that whole thing. So again, we're gonna select, search for our boutique font, switch it to engrave. And now we're gonna bring this over, kind of the same thing, actually pretty close. Maybe just stretch it a touch and rotate it just a touch. And like I say, play around with it there. That is, that is almost a perfect right on top of that script. All right, so once you're happy with both of those, it's not a bad idea to, I'm gonna hold shift and select the two together and we're gonna go ahead and group those. So that'll keep those in those um, elements. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna find the Lake Superior font uh, and then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll get that done and we'll jump right back to the next step. All right, so I also found a close enough font for this. You can see that one doesn't, doesn't line up quite as close as the other one, but it, it looks very similar. And the size that this is gonna be on these slate coasters, that's perfectly fine. Now they did have these dots in there and you could try to do that with text, but I'm just gonna go ahead and draw these in as circles. So we're gonna basically just trace over them roughly the right size. 
Make sure that's set to engrave. I'm just going to copy and paste and drag this one over here to this side. And there we go. We've got our, our dots in as well. All right, so with that, we're going to go ahead and group all these things up again because we want to kind of keep them together. So we've got our text selected, that dot, that dot, and our main one, and we're going to group those up. Now those, you know, will stay together even if we move them. Um, they'll be fine. We now want to focus on this photo. So uh, first thing I can do is uh, I'm going to keep my reference one, but I'm going to make a copy of it. Bring this over here, just in case I mess something up. With our second photo, I'm gonna do some adjustments. First off, we can crop this down a bit. We don't, uh, we're just gonna be focusing on this picture part. So I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna crop down as far as I can so we can still get those trees in there and crop this up as high as that shore and the water. So we will save that. And now I can come into the edit feature. We can use our eraser tool. Let's get rid of some of this excess with the words. We don't need, because we have those converted into text. There we go. All that is taken care of. So now we're left with Molse's photo. And uh, we want to start adjusting it. Uh, so we can play with our grayscale first. And uh, if you start playing with these sliders, you'll see that it starts turning into grayscale and it gives us a little bit of a preview of what we will see. Oddly enough, if I take it back to 255, it brought that color back in, but anything under 255, it goes to grayscale. Now, what I'm seeing with this is too much that looks just like solid here. This is way lighter than the others. So we're gonna do some playing with this. I'm actually going to try to vectorize this part um, so we can do that with the trace tool we come down here and uh, you see it's kind of grabbing most of the image we're just worried about this bottom part now it, it is kind of capturing some of these details this is like the rocky shores of lake superior there but not all of them so we're going to go ahead and go save that now we're going to bring this down here and we're going to ungroup that and play with our edit nodes. So we're gonna grab our edit nodes and come in down here. We wanna find our break point. And it looks like it's gonna be right here. So we're gonna grab our scissors. We're gonna snip that away, snip that away. Grab our select tool. And let's just drag this one up to intersect with that line. It's a slight modification that really won't be seen you're not gonna notice the difference in the end. Now, once again, we can come in here, going to release compound vector. There we go. I right clicked on that release compound vector and now we just want this. I'm gonna separate that from the rest and I'm gonna highlight all these and delete them. This leaves us with this nice little vector. We can set that to engrave. And if we bring this over to here, you'll see that it's going to overlap that image just fine it's going to give us that so i'm also going to move this click on move to we're going to put it on the same layer as our text up there so now we've got most of that taken care of now we can come back over to this image and we're going to play around to try to make the rest of this look a little bit better to do that i'm also going to come back in and crop now that we have our sh our water we're coming here and just bring this up as close as we can to those rocks. Save that. And I'm going to come in and play with our filters, actually. And the one I found in this that might help is Sketch. So that just kind of takes away some of those colors. But it softens it up a little too much. So now we're going to come back into our adjustment. And uh, let's play around with the contrast. That'll bring some of the trees back in, add some to some of the line definition. We can bump up our saturation as well. We're all just we're just trying to make some of these things a little more bold. So play around with your sliders a little bit just to get more of that definition back. We're getting more of the lines, but we're still going to see. Um, let's just crank our contrast full. There we go. Now we're getting most of the trees back. We're getting a nice effect on the shoreline with the rocks. Seeing most of the boards there. 
Saturation doesn't seem to be doing too much for us. Play around with the sharpness a little bit. That sometimes adds a little definition. We don't want to go too high on that. But once you have that set up to where you want it, now we can drag this back over, get it lined up again with our photo. All right, so once we have that lined up, we can grab our larger image up here, drag it out of the way, just drag it off the side, turn its output off, or you can delete it if you're happy with that. And once you are good with everything, we're going to group all this together. And now we can uh, do the setup, we can do the sizing, but we're then going to go ahead and set up our uh, engraved settings. Now, all right, as far as settings, um, I'll show you what I'm actually running here. Uh, we've got multiples here, we've got the, the two vectors, and we've got the image. So for the actual vector image, we're running the IR laser at 80%, 200 millimeters per second, uh, and a uh, lines per centimeter of 200. And then if we jump back out and we look at the image, we are running the IR laser. We're doing a dot duration of 400. We're doing our power range from 31 to 100. We have a lot of light details in here. We don't want loss, so we want a little extra power on those. We're doing a 320 DPI grayscale bitmap mode and bi-directional. This will hopefully give us a fairly even engrave and uh, it will look good. So let's jump back to the lake. We'll see them getting engraved and uh, we'll go on from there. So, I mean, can't ask for a much nicer workshop than this. Got the laser, got some cool air. And right out there, I've got the lake. This worked out well. We've got this set that we can give them when we check out and uh, just had a little fun, like bringing the things along vacation. Sometimes you have some downtime. I'm able to give the resort owners a little bit of thank you for uh, hosting us. So if you're interested in anything you saw in this video, or got any questions, comments, uh, go ahead and leave a, a question or comment down below. Otherwise I will have links to everything used in the description here. You can check it all out. Some of them will be affiliate links. They do help out this channel uh, and tell the manufacturers that you appreciate my content. So. I'm going to wrap this up. It's probably really loud and hard to hear. Anyway, sun's going down. We're going to enjoy the rest of our stay here. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And I uh, hope you get a workshop nights with too. We'll catch you next time.